we're building these one gallon pail feeders, uh, I want to talk to you about the pros and cons of what we've used so far and why we're switching uh, to these one gallon pail feeders. The first ones that we started using uh, were these hive top feeders. Uh, they're pretty easy to use. Uh, the only trouble we had with them is we always had a bunch of bees that were drowning in it, always floating in it. Um, so that was kind of nasty. Uh, it wasn't super effective. Uh, and it's really, no matter what we do, we always had a little bit extra robbing on those too. That was when we were prim primarily using 10 frame boxes. Uh, we switched from 10 frame boxes to five and eight frame boxes. And when we did that, we were looking for a different option to feed the bees. Uh, when we first went to five and eight frame boxes, we went to using quart jars on top. It works out really well. The biggest problem we had with using these uh, mason jar tops uh, is that uh, early spring and late fall, when the temperature drops too much, they leaked a lot. Um, and so that we had to be really careful because we were drowning a bunch of bees. Uh, one of the biggest reasons why we switched and went away from these, uh, these were fine when we, when we could mix um, our feed in a five gallon bucket. A five gallon bucket, you know, makes about 20 quarts. Uh, and that was fine when we had 20 hives or less. As soon as we had more than 20 hives, uh, we, I mean, when we needed to make that second five gallon batch, it became a little bit cumbersome to do that. Um, and as we uh, had more and more hives, we needed a different solution um, to uh, make the feed up. So where we currently are at is using uh, these, these, these bucket feeders, these one gallon pail feeders. Uh, and they work out really well. Um, they work out so well that uh, the whole entire yard is full of them. And if you've seen any videos lately from Don the Fat Bee Man, you'll see all these white buckets in his yard too. Uh, we built him uh, the ones that he's got in his yard. He loves them. Uh, we love them. They're, they're super easy to make and we want to show you how and why we like them. Okay, so here's how these bucket feeders work. Uh, it's super simple. Uh, it's a regular one gallon bucket. Uh, on the, the top lid here, it's a seal tight lid that has a rubber gasket on it. Uh, once we get this hammered on top here, this never comes off uh, because we fill our buckets from this little hole. Now, the hole on the inside of the bucket is cut with a 50 millimeter hole saw. Once that's cut, uh, we then hammer this lid onto our bucket and it's never gonna come off there. Uh, it creates a nice seal tight uh, all the way around that rim there and it's, it doesn't leak. These are tent plugs that you would find on like five gallon uh, paint buckets. We'll have links for all the tools that we use for this uh, in the bottom of the video here. So we're gonna use that 50 millimeter Forstner bit uh, to drill a hole inside of the lid here. Now after you've cut the hole with your Forstner bit, you can use these same tent plugs um, in this hole here and you can actually close this off and it closes off nice and tight and secure and doesn't leak. You would just use a plug that you don't have any kind of a drill bit in. Now what that does is it closes off uh, that hole for the winter time. No rain, no snow, nothing is gonna get in there. And then when it's time to feed uh, in the spring, after you've uh, came through the winter, you're, you're good to go. Now to make these feeders, there's a couple little tools that you have to have. Uh, and we found a couple workarounds for some of these. Um, of course, you need the, the tent plug. Now you have to get a hole in here. Now the, hole, the size hole that we use um, for two to one feeding, we're using about a 0.6 to a 0.8 millimeter size drill bit. And that's tiny, I mean, look at that thing, that is tiny. It's so small, we have to tape it uh, to put it on the drill press or to put it into a drill uh, so the chuck can actually bite on it. So that works. Uh, we also found that you don't need a drill or a press at all. You can actually, by hand, you can press those through. That works out great too. Uh, the, those drill bits, if you want to go that route, we got those from Harbor Freight. I think our entire farmstead's probably built on Harbor Freight. Um, there's plenty of those cheap, free LEDs and tarps laying around here. I'm sure you guys have them too. Uh, I think this is five or six bucks for, the, for this drill bit set. Uh, High-speed steel micro bit set, 30 piece. Um, works, that works great. Probably don't need that. What we found instead that works with things that you already have laying around. If you're building frames and you're building boxes, you're gonna have staples. Uh, and the regular quarter crown staple, uh, 18 gauge is perfect. It fits right in there. It's almost the exact same size as that drill bit. And you just press it through. Just take your spare one, bend it over, punch it through, works out great. Uh, so that'd be for two to one, an 18 gauge staple. 
The Fat Bee Man, he uses fructose, which is about a five to one. That's about 20 pounds uh, a gallon. Uh, and he likes a little bigger hole because that stuff is so thick. So on his lids, uh, I punched for him on his a, using a 16 gauge staple, which I'm sure you have those as well. Uh, and it's the same thing. You just literally punch it right through and it works out great. The nice thing about it is this lid's not gonna, it's not gonna leak. Uh, if it does, you can exchange, you can, you can swap those out for a buck. Uh, and I don't know if you can see uh, on the video the shape of these, but they're actually tapered with a, uh, it kind of sticks out right here. So once that goes inside the lid, it's way inside of there and it clicks tight. It does really great. We haven't had a single one of them leak. We've had them on since uh, May of this year. So we've had them on for pushing three months without a single problem yet. We haven't had one blow off, no rain go in. Um, the trick is just getting your syrup mixed right. If you mix up a one-to-one -one, uh, and you put it in something like this, you might have a little bit of uh, feed in the bottom of your hive. Um, so just make sure you pair the right size hole with the thickness of your syrup. Uh, so that's pretty much those in a nutshell. They're, they're so easy to, uh, to move these in and out of the yard. Uh, what's great is um, when you've got you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 hives or more, this is really cumbersome. Uh, and you're out there you know, every, less than a week or every week to swap these out. Um, and that becomes pretty challenging. This buys you a little extra time. Um, we haven't had syrup uh, go bad in the time that you're, they're actually using it. Once the syrup is on, like two to one, when it's out there for like five, six weeks, it starts to sour just a little bit. Um, but that only happens early in the year when they're not taking it. Right now, they're just now starting to take any feed this year. Uh, and here we are at the end of July. Um, so uh, that's working out really well so far. Let's show you how we cut the holes and then get them set up. We'll go out to the bee yard and see actually uh, how they're working in the field. Okay, to cut this hole uh, inside of our lid, we're gonna use the 50 millimeter hole saw that we got off Amazon. We got a, just a regular old Harbor Freight drill press here that works out pretty good. That's all there is to it. Knock the debris off, take any shavings off, uh, and we're good to go. Now we're ready for a plug. Okay, we'll take that tent plug that 18 gauge staple, just press that through. All right, then we'll take that cap, press it into our lid. And you can see how nice of a seal it makes on the inside there. Okay, now we take this, put it on top of our bucket. And that's it, that is how easy it is uh, to make those. Let's go fill it up and then uh, go put it to use in the bee yard. Okay, we've been mixing up uh, sugar 50 gallons uh, at a time. Uh, our dry sugar we got from the Fat Bee Man here in these big these big barrels here. Uh, this one's about full, we just uh, took some of them off, but uh, we do about two to one. So we end up having about two of these segments full of sugar and then that next one full of water. Uh, and that gets us to about where we need to be. Uh, how this works is we just have, uh, it's from Harbor Freight as well, imagine that a three-quarter horse submersible utility pump uh, that we have plumbed to some PVC here. If you can come take a look, that's full of syrup so you can't see a whole lot. Um, but the pump is down here on this side and it's drawing in all the liquid. It goes up through this pipe. Right now we have a shutoff here. Uh, so the liquid's going right back down into the bottom of this, this pipe here. I have a little 45 degree uh, elbow that shoots it off so it's sucking it bringing it around and pushing it. And it's constantly making that turbulence inside there to get everything mixed up real well. Uh, when it comes time to feed, we've got two shutoffs here so we can kind of control our rate. Uh, so we'll cut this one back just a little bit. When it's time to feed, we just literally pour our cap, put our bucket underneath. And try to keep the beads out, there we go. Fill it up. Put our cap on. Not to make a mess, and we're good to go. Let's go take it out to the bee yard. Okay, so here's the feeders in action. Let's pull those up. And you can see here, the bees can easily get to the feed from here, uh, just using the, the hole that we cut, that 50 millimeter hole in the lid. When we're putting the bucket on, we literally just come down like this, go right over top, and they're fed. It does great. Uh, one added either, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a pro or a con yet, but this type of year, we, uh, we're starting to get a lot of robbing. 
I think these might actually be helping uh, prevent robbing from inside of the hive. As you can kind of see here on some of these uh, pail feeders, we're getting a lot of robber bees on the outside. When that builds up a little bit of pressure, that gasket weeps just a little bit. Now we don't have any problems with it leaking or overflowing or anything, but there's just enough moisture on the inside of that cap uh, that when it rains, it builds up a little bit of a, almost like a sugar water residue on the inside of there and the robber bees come there uh, to feed. So it seems like I'm having a lot less problems with robbing inside of the hive uh, when they're on top of here, almost like open feeding, uh, which, you know, it's everything's so controversial. Feeding sugar, what type of feeder to use? Robbing the whole nine yards. So right here, we've got uh, all these bees here that are robbing on top, um, but inside of the hive, it's as calm as can be. So I almost think that these might actually help with robbing. Um, so far, it hasn't hurt, but we'll see. Uh, and if we see that it's causing more robbing on the inside, we'll be sure to report back and put some uh, notes here on the video. Um, but as you can see here, you know, when you get to, to get to 100 hives or more, I mean, it's, you can't, using quart jars is just too cumbersome. Uh, open up every single hive to feed them uh, with a hive top feeder, that's, that's just too, too cumbersome. Uh, this is a really quick, easy way uh, to just run through the hives and feed them. Like this one here, literally come right through, flip it over, there's the hole, go right on top, they're good to go. So it's, it just works out really well to, to do things fast, effective, save some time in the BR, which we've learned from the Fat Bee Man, uh, and it gets everybody fed. So hope the video helps. If you have any questions at all, uh, let us know. We'll, we'll do the best we can to help you out there. We're gonna have links for the right size bit, the right size hole saw, Forstner, uh, and the tent plugs, as well as links to where you can buy the buckets and lids. Uh, for yourself, save yourself some money, build your own equipment, and, uh, and I hope it works as good for you as it does for us. Thanks for watching. Hey, can you help us out? Hit like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and be sure to check these great videos out too.